Hello and welcome to part two of my basic MDF series. In the first part you saw me put together a bunch of these wall sections out of a kit that I picked up cheaply on eBay. In this episode, whatever you want to call it, I'm going to start exploring some different techniques for finishing these off. They are good enough as they stand if you really don't have any time or the inclination you could put these on the table and they would look fine. They have some details that are actually etched into them. But for me, I like to have a little more interest for things that I'm looking at. So what I will do is I will point the camera down and I will show you the options which I'm gonna go for. I have one, two, three, four, five different options. You have built your lovely MDF models. Now you're looking at them and you're going, how am I gonna finish them off? As I say, you can leave them as they are. But it is nice to make things look quite nice on the tabletop, so a little effort goes a long way. Now the techniques I'm going to discuss here are useful for brick or plaster or those sorts of things. Different techniques I'll discover in a different video and I'll discuss them with you then. So I said I have five different options. Let's go through these. First of all, I have my quick dry polyfiller, which will give a rendered effect. Secondly, is a technique which I've not done before and I'm going to be trying on camera for the first time, which always works out well, doesn't it? I'm going to use air dry clay, which I have in this Russian salad pot. That is das clay there. And I'm going to attempt to make that, to put, apply that in such a way that it looks like bricks. The third option is another one that I've not tried before. And this is 150 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to simply apply it and then dry brush it and hopefully it will look like sandstone wall. We shall see. The next technique is the stone textured spray paints. Now this one's a Rust-Oleum which I ordered online before I found that actually locally I can also find the same stuff and it's a lot cheaper locally. So I have some Rust-Oleum and also I have the local. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use both and see what they look like. I actually have Two rust -oleums. As I've said before in other videos, I run out of gear quite quickly here because of my location and normally not being able to find it, so I'll always order in bulk if I find something I like. The final option, and maybe the easiest and cheapest, is to seal with either an MDF sealer like I have here, or you can just use a normal uh, spray varnish, give that a couple of spray coats over, seal it, and then paint it. I will use normal house paints, and that will be another of the techniques. In this video, I'm not going to do all the techniques. I want these to be sh short and sharp. So over the next couple of videos, I'll go through each of these techniques, show you how to do them. And then at the end of it, we'll look and see what the results are and we can work out which one we think works best. Here goes. Technique number one is going to be using the 120 grit sandpaper. So first of all, I'm going to offer it up and measure the height of the wall to cut the first section. So I have a pencil here, and I'll mark there, and I'll mark there. I then have a straight edge, which I will use to rule across between those two marks. With that done, I'll just make sure that I've not made a stupid mistake. I haven't. I will get my sharp knife, coming across the camera with my arm, I apologise. I'm a beginner at this, video and thing. And I will use the same sharp straight edge to cut along there. Using a sharp knife to do this is much more accurate than using scissors. So, get yourself a sharp knife. As you can see, that is now cut. And that will now sit very nicely in here. So, same thing, I will offer that up, find my pencil, and measure where to cut it to get both ends. So there I have measured where to cut for that, and I will cut that, again using the straight edge and the sharp knife. It is always best to consider doing multiple strokes with the knife. Don't try and cut it all in one go. You'll end up potentially catching the knife 
and not making a clean cut. So if it doesn't cut first time, don't panic. Just slice and slice until it is, but gentle cuts. So we'll offer that up, measure the next section, and there we have it. So now I have sandpaper, which is gonna fit on both sides of this wall section. What I will do is I will use simple PVA to glue that in place. I will apply the PVA to the wall. That is the easiest thing for me to reach. It is rigid, you know, I don't have to juggle it to try and control it, and I don't get glue all over my fingers. Little things like that make hobbying a much more pleasant experience, though sometimes there's nothing quite like getting filthy, as Mel the Terrain Tutor likes to uh, point out. So that's the one side. Now the other, this is proving to be quite a quick technique. I hope that it ends up looking nice. And there we have it. Two bits of sandpaper glued either side of the wall. A very simple idea, but I think it could work quite nicely with some dry brushing. Now I need to decide what I'm gonna do about the top. For now, I don't have to worry about that because what I need to do is clamp it. And as you'll know, if you know me, I have a lot of clamps. So we will put a clamp on each end and one in the middle. I may actually put two through the middle just to, just to make sure. As I often say, you can't have too many clamps. And there you have it. Technique number one, using 120 grit, for this case, I'm sure you can use a different grit, sandpaper to clad the wall. Technique number two is using the air-dried clay to make something that looks like bricks. So what I'm gonna do, first of all, is attempt to roll the clay out very thin. There we are, something like that. Now with the clay that thin, it's very delicate, so be very, very careful. What we'll then do is we'll put PVA on the wall section and stick this clay to it. And I have a tool here, which I'm going to use both to cut the clay out to the correct dimensions and also afterwards for some of the sculpting. So first of all, let's get my PVA glue on my, on my little uh, just off shot dinner plate. PVA is very important when you're working with air dry clay because air dry clay does not actually stick. It is not sticky, it just dries. So with that now done, I'm gonna do something that I probably should have done before. I'm going to mark in where the base is. That's that out of the way. And then I can go Now lift the rest of it out of the way, which will be used for the other side. So there's no waste here. So now we have my PVA, I'll put a little more on. My PVA wall section, and I have what will become my bricks. So I'll carefully peel that off the bench and lay that again carefully and hopefully accurately in place. Now the tool now comes in very useful because it keeps my fingers off. It means that I'm not putting fingerprints all over this nice clay area. Clay surface would be a better word. With that done and relatively well pressed into place, what I will do is the other side. With both sides of the wall now with the air dry clay on, what I'm going to need to do is sculpting the brick lines. I'm gonna do this by eye. It may be a bad idea. I know that you can buy rollers to do this and that I could have used a roller which had the brick pattern 
but I don't own any of them, so this is all I've got. I do aim to get some, and when I do, I'll probably do a review, so watch this space. But for now, I'm going to try to do this as carefully and by eye as I can, and I'm going to score right through with this very sharp tool, which is an actual tool for clay. There we are. And then I'm going to do the next line. Dipping the tool in water. This one I'm not pushing right the way through to see the different results. And the final one I also won't. There we are. So we have four courses. And now what I will do is I'll draw the brick down line, down strokes in. Okay. I'm going to leave the other side as an experiment. I will come back and I will attempt to scribe that when it's dry and see what difference it makes because I'm learning as much as you are in, at some points. As I say, this technique is one that I've not tried before, but I've wanted to try for quite a long time. So this is a good opportunity. This will now be put somewhere warm. It's too cold here at the moment for air dry clay to dry without there being heat. Uh, so I'll pop this down in our living quarters and then when it's dry, we'll come back and do the next step. It's been a few days, I've been very, very busy, but I'm back with these two walls, the first two attempts at doing something a little bit more special with your MDF building. What you can see is that the one that I stuck the sandpaper on is dried fine and is going to be good for the painting stage. And the one that I used the air dry clay on is ready for the next stage. So we had two different types of scoring on this side. We had going straight the way through at the top and being a little bit lighter at the bottom. I think you'll agree with me that the little bit lighter at the moment looks better, but that could change as we get to the painting stage. The other side, I hadn't done anything on. And what I'm gonna do now is I have this tool here, which is a sculpting tool, which is very sharp and I keep stabbing myself with. So if I swear, again, sorry. And I'm going to attempt to score into this now that it's dry. And this is very dry, it has been days. This is not soon after my last videoing. So let's see what happens, let's see how this works. So I'm gonna go quite lightly at first because I don't want to damage it. So that happens quite easily, but it's very, very difficult to keep it in a straight line. And I think this is going to work better for rough cut look. Rather than bricks, maybe it'll work quite well for stone. I'm having to press harder than I would have expected, but that's fine. It's a very sharp tool, this. You could probably use an X-Acto blade as well. And there you have it. That actually was quite nice to do. Once I was a little bit more confident that I wasn't about to pull all of the plaster off of the uh, MDF, that felt quite good. So what we'll do now is the next stage for these two, which is going to be painting them. Now I'm going to use spray paint because I have it downstairs and it's going to be the easiest and the quickest thing to do. Always when you're using spray cans, use yourself a very good respirator. And I will now flash up a picture of me wearing my respirator so you can have a good giggle, but also my lungs will stay healthy. Now these aren't cheap, but they're very, very, very worth it. They get a big, big clip of thumbs up, and you only get one set of lungs, so look after them. We're back, and the spray paint has dried on these walls. And what you will notice on the top and around the base is that the MDF has not adhered or has even soaked up the spray paint. Now I've left it like that, because another later on we will be able to compare and contrast with MDF which has been treated with sealant. Now it isn't going to be as much of an issue for these because I will be putting a base on etc etc but I thought I would show you. The next step I'm going to do involves two other colours of grey which I'll be putting over the whole of these and dry brushing up to make them look much nicer and I think probably the tops I will leave as they are because I have another idea for another video to make them look a bit better, so you'll have to wait to see that. 
So I'll point the camera down and we will get these coloured up. The first colour I'm going to do is I'm going to brush over the top with the dark grey. Okay, when that has gone off, we will come back with a different colour. I'm just going to do the final touches and talk through how these two ideas have worked and what I've learned. So, first of all, let's talk through what I've learned. This is done with the air dry clay, and I have on this side the markings, the sculpting was done while the clay was wet. The top two courses were done right the way through and the bottom course was done much more lightly. On the back is also the air dry clay but this was scored out when it was dry. So let's talk about that for a second. Which of the three techniques has worked best on this? I think the bottom one. So scoring out while it's still wet but not going all the way through. That's very, very deep at the top. Probably doesn't look very right. It looks like there's no pointing at all gone on and it looks like it's about to fall over, frankly. So that's not the greatest of, of techniques and of ideas. But if you look at the bottom, it looks quite nice. It's within scale and it has also is relatively straight. Relatively, I say. On the back, it looks nice in scale. It's got a good effect. And in one sense, I might prefer it, and this could be something you can do maybe if you uh, are not working on such a small area or if you have a metal ruler. If you're able to do that and clamp it in place and score against the ruler, this will be okay. Because what I found really difficult for this was keeping the line straight. And also, I found that I made them quite a long way further apart, where you can see on this side, the courses look quite natural for the scale that we're going for. On this side, they are much bigger. So this is a good technique. I would recommend this. It was very easy to do. Roll out your air dry clay, put it on with some PVA, score it out lightly while it's still wet, and leave it to dry, and then you're done. Then you have your painting and your finishing and weathering and whatever else you want to do. But at that point, it's a, it's a finishing process. Going back to the other, this is the one where I had the... Uh, 120 grit I think it was sandpaper it's been a little while since I started filming this I glued that on and then I've spray painted that with the base coat and this is also this has also worked very very well and I really like the effect it's giving now it's a very subtle effect but it looks like it's kind of been uh, rendered a little bit and I think this is going to work quite nicely with up with a, in a, a um, one of the walls I'm doing for part three of this series so I would recommend this highly as well. This was super easy. Cut the um, cut, cut the sandpaper out, stick it on, and you're done. Then it's a case of putting the colours on as you wish. What I'm going to do now, just to finish off and to show a little final technique, is some light dry brushing. And I'm going to do this very, very lightly. I have some light grey, and I'm going to really dry brush this on. I've got a very, very soft brush, and as you can see, I'm going to take almost all of the paint off it and just go over the top. Just to give it a little bit of variation. You almost can't see that it's doing anything, and this is the key thing with dry brushing. You're not there to put lots of paint down and make a big difference. You're there just to put on that the light catching. Now if you can see that, you can just see that the light is just catching the tops of the raised rough bits on the, on the sawdust, on the, on the sandpaper, sawdust. Got that in my mind. So we'll do the other side. And that is done. Second brick. Well, I want to do slightly differently. 
I have this lovely, rich, ready brown. And I'm going to give a go at, again, a very light dry brush. Maybe a little stronger than the other one. But I don't want it to be too much. Because I want this to look a little bit worn, a little bit less new than that one. So let's see how well this works. So on this side, which was the one that was sculpted when it was dry, it doesn't look that good. But on this side, which was sculpted when it was wet, it looks really well. And when you're looking at that from a distance, that's going to look like quite an ancient old wall that's a bit grey and a bit grimy. And if you put some more weathering on this, if you did some moss and what have you, it would look, really look really well. So I think that's that for this, um, whatever you want to call it, this, this edition of the uh, uh, how to work with MDF kits. I have at least one more in the process of being made and maybe another after that. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you have enjoyed this, please do let me know below if this has encouraged you to pick up an MDF kit or do a technique that you haven't tried before, then that's exactly why I'm doing this, is to show these really basic tips that maybe other people might take for granted and think, well, everyone knows that, so yeah, they don't even talk about it. Please do comment below, as I say. Subscribe if you haven't yet. And if you have subscribed, don't forget to ding the bell so that you can be informed when I do another video. And as always, thank you very much for watching Beard Clipper.